So I found this cute honeybee birthday card for my girlfriend, and I loved it. But on closer investigation, something wasn't quite right. This photo here looks like the bug on the card, right? It's got yellow and black stripes. And yes, it's on a flower enjoying a meal of pollen and nectar. But this is not a bee. The definitive feature is that this creature has only one pair of wings. That makes it a member of the order of Diptera, the order of two-winged true flies. Flies have normal forewings, but their hind wings have been modified into these little nubs called haltiers. The word haltier comes from Greek halteres and meant a small weight that someone would hold and use as leverage while jumping. And it can also mean dumbbells. So these little dumbbell wings act as tiny counterweights that help flies judge their acceleration accurately. They're kind of mechanosensory organ. Bees are members of the order Hymenoptera, with four wings like most insects, although the boundary isn't easy to see because the fore and hind wings are hooked together and overlap. Regardless, the fly is an imposter, not a bee, but a hoverfly. There are a bunch of differences between hoverflies and bees. For example, the fly has much larger eyes that actually come and meet together in the middle of the head, and its antennae are incredibly short. A side view shows that while honeybees have round, full abdomens, the hoverfly backside is actually pretty flat. It's clearly evolved to be viewed from above for the mimicry to work. Everyone knows to leave bees alone because they're equipped with a venomous sting and they know how to call for help. A swarm of angry bees is quite dangerous indeed. Lots of other creatures have evolved to resemble bees, which helps them deter potential predators from bothering them. There are lots of species of hoverflies, the whole family Syrphidae, in fact. The word Syrphid comes from an ancient Greek word Syrphos that referred to a gnat or a winged ant. And in English, we call them hoverflies because of their tendency to hover in the air over flowers. And they might do this to defend their territory, or they might be hovering to inspect possible places to feed or lay eggs. Adult hoverflies and bees both eat flower products and can be helpful pollinators, but as larvae, they live very different lives. Honeybee larvae live inside of hive cells and grow up on a diet of honey, which is mostly made from flower nectar. But no one is serving a meal of honey to a hoverfly larva, so they fend for themselves. Hoverfly larvae are actually predatory, hunting other insects found around flowers. And this can be great for your garden, as some hoverfly larvae can eat hundreds of plant-damaging aphids during their larval phase. In my research, I came across this particular hoverfly species called Epistrophe grossularia, and that was such a great weird name that I had to know more. So I learned that epistrophe is actually an English word that in rhetoric refers to ending a series of phrases, each with the same repeated word. Epistrophe comes from the Greek word strophe, meaning turn, and epi, meaning upon. So the Greek word epistrophe meant something like to turn upon or to return. And honestly, I have no idea how this became the name of a fly, but it sounds pretty cool. On the other hand, the specific name grossularia can refer to gooseberries, whose flowers can be a food source for hoverflies. So in the end, this card designer fooled everyone into appreciating a fly when they thought they were getting a bee. And there's no honey to be found. But it's still a really cute card, so I'll call it a win.